everybody. Welcome to Tales from the Trails. Today we have a special guest, Eugene. This is a little bit different than normal because today we have a guest from inside of Banjax. Eugene, if you don't mind, just introduce yourself and let everyone know what you do here. Yes. So thank you for having me on this podcast. Sure. I'm Salesforce developer here at Banjax and I have a four-year experience in Salesforce, even more in development. Immigrated from Ukraine, came to US seven years ago, almost eight actually. Been enjoying this life here. That's I'm glad I found Banjax. Yeah. We're glad to have you at Banjax and glad to have you in the United States. So thank you for joining us both at Banjax and in the country. Super glad to have you and be a part of your journey. But the reason why we're having Eugene on today is he's done something really special here inside of Banjax. He's created a AI powered tool that allows us to superpower our work on Salesforce. So he's going to demo that. But before he does that, Eugene, would you tell us a little bit about how this product got started? I really like this origin story. So yeah, let us know how you got started on that. Yeah. So first of all, I was interested in AI way before I even joined Banjax. I even was a part of a smaller startup consisting of two people and what i did somewhat like similar of what i did but way way simpler it was using like rasa ai i think that's the name which was also text processing and it was also idea of user types in natural language text and then system understands what user means and retrieves data from database and then compounds a message to the user. So it was like very similar. It was just two people and it was supposed to be for like military warehouses. Oh, wow. uh, so that was like years ago. I don't know, like five years ago. So it was way before OpenAI. So I was interested in AI for a long time. I guess my first even experience with AI was when convolutional neural networks became really popular. So those are networks, so that's not aware. Those are neural networks to process images, to understand images and to do something about it, right? So I think it was like back in 2014, 2015, um, I made like a small AI myself completely from scratch, which basically plays the game, the Google offline game like when you don't have internet and you can play oh yeah with the dinosaur yeah. yeah yeah he jumps over yes, the cactus exactly. uh, yes so i wanted to automate the game to make bot learn how to play it right so not just program it but i wanted for it to learn so what right. i did is i made like a application to learn and i feed the line of pixels just like of the game itself huh. and gave it ability to two actions basically do nothing or jump and then what i did is recorded myself playing for 15 20 minutes and then based on that i taught ai to how to do it and then it learned from me and it became better than me at doing what i did wow <laughs> so wow. actually my record it it went to fifteen thousand or something that's awesome <laughs> like i was bored watching <laughs> yeah it took 13 minutes to, to wait for it to finish playing <laughs> I did not know that you had all that history with AI and AI has come yeah. a long way, as you mentioned. There were a few breakthroughs <laughs> in the AI field. So at first it was more like narrow AI everywhere because there were images, but you could only use it for images. There were predictive models, but you can only use it to predict data and nothing else really. And now with these conversational AIs, it's also narrow. It only mm -hmm. can generate text. But because text is such a vast tool that allows to do lots of things, now we can do way more with AI than before. Yeah. Just because text, just because speech or language is such an amazing tool. Yeah. Yeah. So that brings us up to working yes. at Banjax. A couple of months ago, I basically had a conversation with the whole company and said, hey, everybody, chat GPT is out. API access is out. We need to stay ahead of this as a company. We need to figure out how to integrate AI into our work so that we can do a better job for our clients. I encourage everyone to figure that out on their own and share their best practices. And so you went off and I didn't talk to you for weeks, but then you, I guess, with your experience, decided to pursue building a tool. So yeah. how did that go? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about like implementing the tool, but... 
I didn't have time or like concrete ideas on what exactly I want to make. But then eventually, even before the announcement, uh, me and my boss, Josh, we were discussing that AI yeah, is pretty big. We should do something. And I have like a couple hours of free time every day at work. So if you give me like API access with Banjax, create yeah. card on it, I can, I can just go ahead and research and maybe, maybe do something. And initial idea was completely different. It was about something that we put on the org itself. And there wasn't like a necessary idea, but then I took a vacation for three weeks mm. and I went to New York to my family. And mm. there I had all the time in the world for just that project. And I got excited with the idea that imagine if there was a uh, AI helper, you open it, maybe like extension, and then you type in text, like I want to make this formula field and then it creates the formula field. I want to make these changes and then, or I want to make this flow or automate this. And then it goes in and understands what's required and go uh, and does it. So basically it's like your personal admin, just mm -hmm. on your fingertips. And which can also help you debug things like you can type, I'm making this flow, but it doesn't work. What could be the reason? And it's going to go in and check every API names and then query that inside the Salesforce and understand maybe something is off and what's the error and debug it and help you. Like it can say, oh, this doesn't work because you're trying to change a record type that's not active in the flow. And then it's going to be like, do you want me to activate it? And then you say yes. Yeah. And there you go. You fix that. That would be like amazing. So you had the vision and you had the access and then you made it come to life. Yeah. We're about to take a look at it now, but man, I just want to thank you and also pat myself on the back and also give just a, a word to other businesses out there that something you said, Eugene, was if you just give me API access with Banjack's credit card on the account, you already had the energy and the idea to run with it. And so if we yeah. look at it from a business standpoint of cost, how much money do you think we spent on that API? I, 15 bucks. I, maybe 15 bucks, right? <laughs> maybe 15 maybe less, actually. Yeah, I don't even know yeah. if it was, because I checked our OpenAI API account. I have a different one that I have another project running on testing. And that one I've only spent like a dollar on. So the return on investment for giving you all you needed was API access with a company credit card on file and you had the desire and ability to figure out how to make it work. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's not just that. It's also what allowed me to do it is at Banjax, we have unlimited PTO. Yeah. And I just took three weeks off at the beginning of the year. I don't think many yeah. people in the company can actually do that because this allows you to have then like other vacations in the summer or like other places. But Banjai has unlimited PTO and that was like perfect time. There was like a window that my clients didn't have a lot of work, almost none actually for me specifically. I had yeah. like my team work, but my client was just like finished and I had free time for a few weeks and I'm like, okay, I'm taking a vacation and this unlimited vacation plus right. this credit card plus access, right? So it enabled me to just go ahead and do it, right? Plus I knew that Banjax can be a platform for this tool as well. So I can test and because there is no way I can find enough clients if I was by myself, but with Banjax, there are lots of connections that this tool can be promoted to and we can use it internally and so on. So that feels that those three things are what pushed me to, yeah, I can do that. Awesome. I'm glad it worked out like that. I'm glad that you and Josh collaborated on it and y'all figured it out yeah. that you had everything you needed. All right, let's get into it. Do you want to show us what you've done so far? All right, let me share the screen. Okay, great. Okay. So imagine you are like on the org, right? And then you want to make like a custom field, right? Okay. And so this tool, you open it here, it's like an extension and you'll have an ability to change org in the future, but right now it doesn't, like it's still work in progress. And so sure. for example, we can have create formula field that adds first and last name so what the way i've done it is it will try to understand users intent and then it will try to understand what the requirement is and then ask the right questions hopefully yeah you're using natural language to do work on the salesforce org yes uh, 
okay great so it responded to you to create a right. formula so, field i need to know the object. right now it's slow for few reasons usually it's way faster it's actually i find that when you type the first message it actually responds slow but then once after the first message i don't know maybe connection gets established okay and it processes way faster and it goes like really fast so yeah as you can see i think this is the most powerful tool that we have for conversation because it allows me as a developer to tell AI that, first of all, it needs to understand the intent of the user, in this case, create a formula field. Then once it understands intent, I give it myself the requirement. So I don't make it come up with the requirement itself or mm -hmm. try to guess it. I, I say that, okay, to create formula field, you need those things. You need to know where on which object to create the field. You need to know what the formula is. And you also need to know the field name, right? So those three things. And I say, okay, find those three things in the whole conversation. And it tries to get that information. So in this case, we can see that the formula is already there because it adds first and last name. So we are lacking object and field name. And that's exactly what it's asking. So what I can do is I can say, make it on contact. However, I'm not sure what to name it. Oh, wow. Give me some suggestions. And it will actually go ahead and give me suggestions on what to name it. Maybe not always. <laughs> it's being a little stubborn. <laughs> yeah. So it's figured out that you want to make a formula field. It knows what the formula is. Now it knows the yeah. object because you told it it's on the contact object. Oh, and now it's giving you suggestions for the field name. Yeah, and then I can say, yeah, that works. So this is still work in progress, right? So this conversation flow can be adjusted properly. And sometimes it just has like low performance, but there are ways to mitigate it. But also you can see it responds way faster than the first message. Yeah. So is it so going to work? Do, you know? We'll see. Right. Work. And there you go. It so, did it. Yep. Any full name formula field. And then it also does suggestions, like you can add to page layouts and modify permissions and so on. So now if we refresh the page, there should be a full name custom field, which is a formula field. Full name custom field, this is formula field. And there is the formula first and last name, right? Wow. So what we can also do is we can, for example, you see it says help text formula made by GPT-3. Then I can say modify help text on full name field on the contact object. And then what it will be able to do, it will be able to find that field. So this is the field that we just made. So it's custom field and it's able to search inside the org to find that field and to do something with it. So, wow. so again, it looks like so, the message takes longer, yeah. You can do all sorts of things, all sorts of different work on yeah. a Salesforce org. So I've seen you make a formula field. Now you're modifying a property of the field, the help text property. Yeah. What other things? And so it works basically within the org, right? So it's grounded to your Salesforce org, right? So whatever org you're connected to, it's grounded to it, right? So this okay. is the source of truth for it, right? So it takes all the information and uses API calls to know what the org already has and to help you with whatever you already have, right? So it's going to be existing flows, it's going to be existing fields. So whatever automations you have, it's going to be able to help you modify it or maybe create a new automation, whatever you want, uh, but it's going to be grounded to your org. So I say, I want help text to say podcast. And yeah, it asks if that's all. So I'm going to say that's all. So basically it confirms that if there's anything else I want to modify. So this is an example of like conversation flow, right? So I added a confirmation at the end, testing out if confirmation works and if it's actually interesting. Okay. So there you go. Now it's updated. Now if you refresh the page. The help text is going to say podcast. There you go. Wow. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do all sorts of work inside the Salesforce org with yes. natural language. And on the back end, it's using Salesforce APIs 
and it's using metadata from the org to figure out what the org already looks like so that it can know what kind of objects to work on, what kind of field names, what kind of help text that it can modify. That's pretty much how it works. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's also able to understand API names based from your natural language. So as you can see, I set here a full name, right? But the field name is actually full underscore name, underscore, underscore C. And it figured I'm also it out. using natural language. Yeah. So I retrieve like all the fields available and then I say, find the user request this field, find it in that list of all the fields. And then it finds the API name and says, oh, I found it. That's the field the user is talking about. And the same with the object. So it's like able to understand all of it. That's how it's able to understand. Yeah. Okay. So next question, why do we want to use this? And before you answer, let me go ahead and in case we have anyone in the audience that doesn't know what Banjax does, we do a ton of work on Salesforce. We work with companies all over the world that are trying to improve their business operations by improving their Salesforce org by matching their org up to their actual business needs. So this is what we do all day, every day. We also build products on Salesforce. So Eugene, how do you think this is going to help us at Banjax? So initially it's gonna be pretty simple and just like a little bit workflow improvement, right? So it's gonna be easier. For example, you could be on a meeting and client maybe ask you to create a formula field, which is pretty simple. You can go ahead and do it, right? So you open it. Okay, so it's this client. So when you change the client, and then once you change the client, you type in your request that I want a formula field that does this, and then you press enter, and then it's gonna create right there, right? So it's basically an efficiency tool right now. However, I envision that the real value in this tool is going to be in the future when it's going to be able to understand more of automations and help you debug certain issues. Because while we do a lot of development, I would say around 50% of that is development and 50% is helping solving issues that mm. clients have in the org. Gotcha. And, and when you fix the issue, it's usually hard to find the bug. But if you had someone to go through entire org because you come in this client's org and you know nothing about it there is nothing that you know and then what you can do is you can use this tool to first discover the org right so you can ask i'm looking for the flow that does something like this and then like this functionality and then it's going to look on existing flows read descriptions and try to understand like okay so probably this is the flow you're looking for and it will give you api name and then you can say, okay, so this flow doesn't work correctly. This is the issue I'm getting. So what could be the issue? And it's going to go in and scan everything, right? It's going to scan every single metadata. So it's going to try to find simple issues, right? If issue is not in the logic, it's going to be able to find it. And right. I think this is really the powerful because now it takes a really long time. It takes a couple hours at least to understand the org, understand automation, understand the flow, and then find the issue could take even longer because there could be so many little pieces that you need to check and you have to click through interface and you need to check like, okay, so is this field correct uh, data type? What does this field do? What does that field do? And you have to go ahead and check descriptions or check with the client, like what it does, but AI will be able to understand most of it and guess what could be wrong. So it narrows down your search and instead of two hours, you'll spend like 10 minutes. Yeah. And that is value as a business that we can then return to the client. I Absolutely. think AI is going to change all businesses, right? And we want to be ahead of that. And whoever can return that value back to the client is going to be a more valuable company and is going to win in the long run of serving clients. And so I also envision another use for this tool is that eventually it can be given to the clients themselves, to their orgs. And so what they will be able to do, like, for example, it's not a demo because this functionality is like, this is stage one, we just use it like internally for simple things. And stage two, we use it internally for complex things. And then stage three, I think the clients will be able to use it as their right. own tools. So imagine you're like on this page layout, you'll be able to open it and type, I want level field to be at the very top instead of at the bottom. And you just say the natural language, right? And it just modifies the layout. So for people who do not know how to administer Salesforce org, it will be tremendous help because now instead of 
going to the email or Slack and contacting their contractors or admins. They're going to ask, oh, I want this page layout to be moved there. And mm -hmm. oh, it's going to take a while. But now you can just do it in a minute or less by just typing it. So you have like a personal admin that's capable of simple tasks. And I think that's where real power is going to come in. There's two things that I need to say before we wrap up the podcast. One is that for anyone that's worried about the security aspect of this, we have not put this through the full security review process. However, we're totally on top of that aspect of it. The data flow, and this could be a three hour podcast by itself in terms of the data flow, which parts go to uh, chat GPT, which parts go to Salesforce. We are not sending any confidential record data to any third party open uh, APIs. We're totally on top of that. And if you're interested in that, you can DM us and we can dive further into it. But the last thing I just want to note is just to give Eugene props and credit for doing all this work and for building this tool. The tool is amazing. It's going to make our team better. It's going to allow us to serve our clients better. And the last thing I want to say is just to give a shout out through the words of a client. We had a client that recently gave us a testimonial. And if I recall correctly, it said, Eugene, you've done more in 15 minutes for our Salesforce development than the previous team had done in three weeks. Uh, and so that's the kind of work that Eugene delivers. And that's what we want to deliver as a company for our clients is to help them uh, achieve their business goals faster and more efficiently through using our services and our tools. Thanks again, Eugene. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on this podcast. I'm always happy to share this tool and because it gets me more excited and yeah. makes me work more on it when I show it to people. Because when you work on it, you see it every day and it's not impressive anymore. And you lose understanding of like how amazing the tool is. But when you show the people, it like blows their mind and you're like, yeah. oh, it's amazing tool. I have to work on it more. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I've seen you do demos that, like you said, blow people's mind because it really does a lot of versatile things that we didn't even fully cover in this demo, but it, I think it's going to be mm -hmm. a game changer. Yeah, that's what I think too. Cool, Eugene. All right. Thanks again. Have a good day. Thank you. Sure. You too. Bye. Bye.